The first uh, identified uh, active TB case associated with this outbreak was reported to KDHE in January of 2024. Once the County Health Department notified us of, uh, uh, of an active TB case, we went into our, our standard processes of reaching out to the Health Department and, and uh, ensuring that the proper contact investigation uh, had started. Uh, patient treatment had, had also begun, asking if, if there's anything that they think at that time that they needed assistance with from the state. By June of 2024 is when we realized the extent of what it could be. The Division of Infectious Diseases at the University of Kansas Medical Center became involved in August of 2024. We were assisting the Wyandotte County Health Department in conjunction with Kansas Department of Health Environment and the Centers for Disease Control. We have a very diverse faculty. Uh, some of our faculty participate in the Mayo Clinic Tuberculosis Center of Excellence doing virtual consults. This really gives us a baseline uh, knowledge and information of how the treatment of people suffering from tuberculosis is really a multidisciplinary effort. Everyone was really critical in terms of getting this outbreak under control in about as, as well a manner as we possibly could have. So having that combination of our local health departments, having our CDC uh, colleagues helping out, our community health workers. The news about TB is spreading around the community, people talking about it, but I never really understood. First time I heard about it, I thought it was not really serious until I met the state of Kansas and CDC when they really come down and told me how serious it was. That's when I realized that it's really already impacted the community. This is something that we need to uh, address it right away. The first thing I did was reach out to community leaders and the pastors from all the Micronesian churches across both state of Kansas and Missouri. I tried to work as much as I could to, especially to awareness and education about it. Just to have the people come out and be confident and not be afraid of it. Just the stigma around it, that's what it really has people more afraid to come out. There's a lot of opportunity to really help, you know, some vulnerable populations. For all these people, you know, this TB diagnosis was kind of their initial engagement in healthcare, but then you kind of find they have diabetes, they have hypertension, they have these other medical problems that we're able to get them engaged with, um, you know, primary care providers in the community, in addition to treating their TB. It's very satisfying um, taking care of these patients and, and getting them managed. In late winter, early spring of 2025, we had gotten to a position where the tuberculosis outbreak was becoming contained and our numbers were decreasing. Then we very unexpectedly uh, had our public health associates from the CDC pull because of cuts related to Doge. It was very demoralizing and we were concerned about our ability to continue to uh, contain the outbreak without their assistance and expertise. We persevered, I think, because we looked back at where we had started in the outbreak and we looked at how much progress we had made. And we had spent a lot of time working to contain the outbreak and to build a bridge into the community where they trusted us. And so we said, look at what we've done. We can't stop at this point. We have to continue. We didn't feel that the, the outbreak was fully contained until April of 2025. It was about 15 months or so. This outbreak really illustrates the importance of having uh, people go into the field of infectious disease. We know over the last few years that match rates into infectious diseases fellowships have been dropping. But I think if we can expose more learners to outbreaks and, and what we do to contain them and our successes and even our failures, uh, it may help to ignite in them a passion to pursue infectious diseases in public health. Our fellowship is a two-year clinical-based program here in Kansas City. Our fellows are engaged in complex infectious disease cases. Overall, I think we have a really robust program. We have an excellent environment and city to live in, and we really have enthusiastic, bright, and dedicated ID faculty and staff who are really dedicated to training the next generation of our ID leaders. We have a large academic medical center with all of the subspecialties that one can imagine. The breadth of pathology that we see at the University of Kansas Medical Center is second to none. The learning experience that an infectious disease fellow would get at the University of Kansas would be among the best in the nation. Thanks for watching, but now an important disclaimer. 
The content of this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Viewers should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.